which we have them blooming just outside in this weather outdoor do you need you got your you're on okay bye guys have a good one Hi everybody. Uh, Jamie, did you guys give a tour? Nice. Oh, okay. We can. I can do a segment on that. Okay. How many of you? Uh, I for this year. Uh, the topic. I wish I was gonna try. Uh, show you and showcase what we have really in the prime. And this week. Uh, for now, it's actually uh, Lady Ansep. Alba, and the, the every, is, there's a lot of all, uh, insect, but the one that been uh, kind of overlooked uh, by a lot of the breeder before is the Alba strain. And the best Alba is the one in our collection is the uh, Sterling Dickinson uh, AMAOS, and this is uh, all everything we have, including this one. Uh, many of you have is my personal Facebook friend. Uh, you have seen me. We actually have one of this posted, uh, mounted on the Queen Palm outside in Southern California and facing the west. And Ansep Alba is a fascinating uh, uh, species strand. And this has been grown outdoor. And our temperature here is between up to 115. <laughs> Fahrenheit in the summertime and they are this this is the one that's been out there for about 20 20 years you know this is the, the living NT for example and this is how we propagate we make division every year uh, from that so it's a very proven variety uh, and I want to show you just can you show this one here okay this is one species that having a greenhouse Growing in the greenhouse doesn't mean they are better. They actually, this is green, this is actually grown. The division we made a couple years ago, and they are grow in the greenhouse at, with a minimum nine temperature of fifty five. And what I, the the grow, the one that grow in the greenhouse doesn't have the suitable and the vigor as the one grow outdoor. This is the one. This is the one that Jeff and uh, Roger just putting in just for the shooting. Uh, so Ansep Alba, this one for example, if you, this is the only strand, the MC609. I know many of you go under light now. If a lot of them did not grow Ansep variety for in the house because the size of the plant or the size of the flower spike, but Alba one is actually the one time kind of to revisit again for today's modern uh, culture. So I'm going to show you uh, for the beginner, uh, for the new member, or if you never grow uh, insect before, or calaria. Uh, calaria is a symposium. Uh, it's like bamboo. They have a rhizome. Okay, so they grow on a rhizome. Uh, Fair analysis, for example, is a monocot. They always go this way that including the venda so symposium is the calaria type the dendrovium the pathopedium they all have this rice when they always flower constant give you new shoot versus the monocot that i find an opposite or the venda they always go upright north and south okay so this is why this uh insect alba also generically the suitable between each one of them is tighter they uh they so they don't they're not constant running out of the pot, for example. I know there are some beautiful big standard lavender insect alba, uh insect purple one or uh, standard type. But the, the the suitable between each of them can be two two inches. So they are constantly walking outside the pot. And so for that type, that's a different subject. We'll go over that. But the, for the alba one, I think personally uh i like the 
the way the compact compactness the the very tight space between its rhizomes so this is actually and also even if you go in the pot uh, I found the inside alba like to have this kind of mesh pot the plastic pot like this have a hole on this you know you know the, the moss is the, the root can be you know everywhere on discipline but that's okay uh, they can also grow in the moss in fact uh, in Japan when they grow this alba uh, and insect they all go in the moss but remember always let them really dry it can even let them bone dry in the winter time uh, when I was at the Tokyo Orchid Show uh, many years ago I visited a grower and they say uh, insect alba because they can actually live it in a greenhouse that does not require a lot of heater they can go down to 35 degree on the alba 35 degree Fahrenheit providing that it just they didn't don't water anything just leave the pot in media dry okay so this is a very very uh, uh, user friendly uh, even for beginner so if you are looking at a catalog or any of the uh, offering if you see any insect in the background so if you look at the uh, pages if you know you have lady insect as a primary hybrid or grand grandparent you can always rest assured the plant will be a lot hardier and weather tolerance okay how you doing uh, any questions so far okay so the alba strain in my area in southern california alba always flower earliest for me very similar to the uh, uh, last week we did the engrectum uh in fact this guy here has been open uh, since Christmas so if you like something that the color coronet for your collection okay engrectum subatidalia the one we covered last week is good for Christmas time and then you can always rest assured this variety will always flower for Christmas too. So this is actually not bad. It's been flower outdoor uh, constantly, or well, between some of them, about six to eight weeks now. Okay. And generally speaking, uh, for the Alba one, they use about three flower uh, per spike is normal. Uh, we have an extremely hot weather, but I have seen the Alba been out, grown outdoor uh, we up to four or five flowers on them but uh, I, we didn't do a good job of, of feeding them uh, last summer because it's so hot when you have weather up to 100 degree uh, we tend to kind of shy away from feeding because in plant physiology for example in orchid if the plant are about 95 degree or 90 degree the chlorophyll the cells the stoma they automatically close to prevent any loss of water and sunburn for example so even if you feed them during the hot weather 90 degree and up you're not going to do any good service to the plant in fact you might run into the problem of the fertilizer burn uh, and this is why you see here uh, we actually also use our uh, normal is optimum orchid nutrient you notice that uh, it's actually very very pure almost reagent gray that's why you don't see many of the tip burn here in combination with mega dry okay you notice that I don't have any tip burn here and I just use tap water and we don't have the best water in Southern California our summertime uh, the water the EC label is about 0.8 and you don't want to go about point uh, 1.0 so this is why we always grow less is more we feed in less when it's really hot in the summertime uh, but always and they always flower in this fall winter time so by the time the, the the hot and the stretch of the summer is over when they are putting out the new shoot coming up for the flowering and this has happened about September, October, November. This is when you can go heavy 
on the regulatory on the fertilizer, okay? And the fertilizer uh, should not have any high nitrogen in there. And this is why we use, uh, we develop this, this formula, formulation for year round. So uh, I can break it down to three formula and make you, like you had to buy three different plant, different formulation and use in different time of the year. No, this is actually a lot easier and very concentrated. It's only to use about a, a small teaspoon per gallon of water and that bottle like that, uh, we can make about 181 gallon of diluted solution. And so that's for one concentrated teaspoon. So that's about eight cent per gallon. So it's very economical. So, so I always mark it on my calendar. And we tell, it, try to tell our staff, you know, feed on the calendar. So this been outdoor depending on where you live. Okay, this is the plan. Any whole outdoor collection, yes? Can you explain a little bit, just really quickly, about Mega Thrive Fertilizer, how, why you have to do it in separate weeks versus, you know, same week, and how Mega Thrive can not hold for more than 24 hours? Just really quickly, because you have a Oh yeah, the, the, the Mega Thrive, we don't hold, we, you know, my background, before I trained the horticulture, I was a chemistry major too. And they, I, even though it might read or in article, I can, they want, some people get lazy, especially in the ho other horticulture industry, that bedding plant, they want the, what they call tem mix. They want to mix different chemical into one to say in the, in the name of say labor, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because uh, make a threat, for example, uh, you notice that it's not really a fertilizer. It's actually, uh, we had to register as a four-year fertilizer. It's really a bioenzyme. And it does, you notice that this does not have any phosphate in there. Because that's why you don't want, you never want to mix the megathrive solution and fertilizer and non resorted food together to say the effort. The fertilizer in any any fertilizer, most of the balanced fertilizer have phosphate in there, and the phosphate will deactivate the enzyme in mega dry. Okay, and so we should redo another taping of how the appropriate of watering. Uh, give us uh, Jeff. You know, I know we have this is the eighty two eighty three. I know the earlier uh, last year's. Uh, podcast, the audio, video, everything is not as nice as not right now. So we should revisit some of the older uh, beginner session so with a better audio, okay? Uh, so this is why never mix any fertilizer or fungicide or pesticide together, okay? Yes. Sorry, another quick question. You want to come here? No. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw somebody posted that, that Megathrive burned their uh, cactus or succulent. And I look at the, the, the photograph. Okay, for a lot of this uh, was the succulent. I look at the video. Sometimes they, uh, in the, they actually repot them right before they sell it and they put some really decorative uh, rock on them. Uh, so, which means, well, first of all, the root might not be established. Okay. Uh, I don't know how people can even kill the succulent. Okay, so if when that happened, it's not really the mega thrive. It is the uh, something wrong with the potting, with the rooting media, with the potting mix. Or uh, maybe the plant was uh, thoroughly wet water. But what happened with a lot of the uh, uh, in in our business uh, before the ship? Most of the the, the the succulent, for example, or you go to the big box store, they are actually probably in the truck for minimum five to seven days. So the grower will actually want to make sure they are well watered. So in transit, that might, uh, they might cause a lot of the root fungi problem. And they go into the store, the shock, 
So there is problem maybe down at the root. Okay, when something happened to the plant, it, the first thing I check is all about the root. Okay, a very good well rooted system, okay, will help you take any kind of abuse. This, look at all the root system here. Okay, the aerial root like right now, as long as they are not, you touch it, they are nice and firm, and they even have a green tip. The arrow root, that's okay. They like to hang out. Ansep is native from Mexico, and they grow themselves on the tree branches. Okay, so they are most of the orchid in the, in the, the Calaria, for example, they are epiphyte orchid. They never really grow in the pot. We the one that made them grow in the pot by adjusting the potting media. So if that's very natural for them to hang out, that means they are happy. Okay, so in the perfect world, the root will go on forever, so two or three miles, but they will stop because even in the wild, you got monsoon weather, you got really dry, so then the root will stop growing, and that's okay as long as I, they are alive. Uh, don't look at some people really don't like that because they are, if you are a type of person, they go to the supermarket, you have to pick the perfect apple not even one mark on that, don't do this orchid, okay? If you are professionals, that is the natural way for them to do this. You know, while you have customer, uh, we send the mail order, and they, they, they went then rather uh, calling complaint to say, to Karen, because no, she do not like the way that the root hand out, okay? And what can we say to them? Maybe you should go this type of orchid. So this is the kind of disclaimer. If you do not like undisciplined root, to hand outside, and then Cataria orchid, a lot of Cataria orchid is not for you, okay? So, so a lot of feeding right actually in the fall. So Lady Ansep is actually very similar to Miltonopsis that we mentioned earlier. Remember Miltonopsis, they actually go dormant in hot weather. In the summertime, they actually do not do a lot of uh, shoot until the maximum temperature is below 95. Okay, so uh, we usually pick up feeding again right about when the new shoe come out. So it's usually what we do in, in, the, in your collection, for example, uh, species collection, you should separate them and give them a little bit more personal attention because species uh, depend on what they are. And we actually write a, a very detailed description and trying to uh, explain to them. Uh, every the species, because they are native of, uh, of a particular area in Mexico, they do have very special requirement uh, versus the hybrid. When you start mixing hybrid together, they will have different kind of gene pool. So they are sort of like the, the, the dog, the mug. The mug, sometimes the, the, the mug is not so easy to grow, but the species, as long as you know their growth cycle, okay. In the summertime, when it's about 95 degrees, depending on where you live, about 95 Fahrenheit. Uh, try to not to overfeed them. Or, I mean, for us, we just simply kind of uh, stop feeding them. And also avoid over water, because when it's like hot, we also associate with warm night temperature and that may be cause rotting. Luckily for us in Southern California, we don't have rain, but if you are living in the area, in Florida, for example, grow this in a basket, okay? A bent up basket, for example, and hang them up. Don't put it on the bench. Sometimes the bench, you don't have enough air movement. So, so this is go outside. Just make sure they have a good area for air movement, or simply mount it on the tree if you're in in Southern California, uh, South Florida, Homestead, for example, even Central Florida. This this can take very good weather. Some Central Florida, uh, sometimes even up to uh, Gainesville. Put it under the uh, gutter of the house, okay? What about repotting? Uh, repotting, very similar to all the Catalina. We only repot when the flower finish, pending when they have this one, for example, we're not going to repot them. Why not, you say? 
because I haven't seen any new shoot yet. So the rule of the thumb, okay, I remember I always mention, sometimes I would either use March as a guy, spring as a guy, providing them, right, providing them they have a new shoot. But since everybody is different, my area in Southern California and your area, or you might go under the light, uh, you always want to wait until the new shoe come out, the new shoe come out, minimum two to four inches. And I prefer four inches that because after the four inches, that that's the, the base is where uh, they are going to have new shoe formation. And uh, another trick personally I use to stimulate faster, and this is great for if you go in the greenhouse or under light, if you want to get in faster, especially on the light, because you can you can have twelve hour of light requirement there. Okay, but this one here, every two or th every two grow minimum two grow. I would prefer three. You can make one division. So I will just leave it there. And this is what a little. A little bit cheating. Well, a lot of time, everybody had different schedule, so I peel off all the the potato sheet here that is exposed. Here, Roger, can we focus on here if you can? And I have this. Uh, this is why the normal. This is not lipstick. Uh, <laughs> normal is two in one cakey paste. Uh, cakey paste can induce flour, or in this case, I want the dormant flour, dormant flour to come faster. So this this base here has dormant flour, but you just paste on here, okay? And this way, I can guarantee you, is you are not going to get one shoe possible multiple shoe and minimum one month earlier than if you did not do the cakey paste and another thing we want to do and since this is not established one way to uh, for publication purpose and I already store I already did the framing this is when you have real your time so I want to do this this is actually pre this is part of the publication 101. Okay, but I'm not gonna yank it up yet. Everything still attached. You see here? Okay, so that way, when this have a new shoe and new grow, and when you are ready to di divide them, the print is ready. And, and also where the cut surface, I'm going to do the two in one. Do you see here? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm going to do a cakey paste. Okay, cakey paste is of a fan and also the name, they, the design, but my, the, my normal is okay, two, uh, two in one cakey paste have this a uh, very nice uh, kinetin, uh, organic kinetin developed from the corn. So they actually very gentle. So this way, not only this will be ready, the backbone will be also encouraged to have a new shoe coming up. And look, look at this one here. I have another, I can make another division here. Okay, so they are there. And this is how you propagate. Division. And you, if you have Catalia, okay, uh, this is actually a good insurance to have extra copy in your collection and this is only 1995 is hey one division is worth uh, worth the money and this is one a kilogram um then once you have an extra division you can actually trade with your friend at the orchid club for example all right so this is how easily we can propagate make so everything that we sell on this one here called mc609 uh dickerson is all from one brand that I started building up 20 years ago. So this is why sometimes 
we don't need to go back to to a tissue culture because that will be really young stages and that might take five years from out of fresh to mature side versus right now at this stage is adult to adult okay so this is how i propagate them and because the height they stay compact there's one way that you can control this this one we just let it hang free a lot of water so i can get we want the height so we when they are spiking, we give it a lot of water, and also with the help of mega dry, we want to get a total spike. Now, if you are going under light, yes, you can go NCEP alpha under light. The trick is when they are spiking, hold back the water. So you wash, as you want to water less. The less of the water, the shorter the spike. And also they, they can actually, take full morning sun so if you want to want to mount this on the tree for example wait until the new shoe coming up so this this for example uh you might have I, i'm gonna have two extra division here i can uh decide to go to for mounting on the cork or mounting on the tree so wait until the new shoe come up about april and that is the perfect stage to mount it on the cork and then you can establish on the cork first and then go to the tree or uh in in my case it's such a wee for i just we just directly mount it on my queen palm and uh i, I would uh find the picture of the queen of the ends of alba for our, our, on our queen palm every december uh, they are starting to start stepping, uh, spiking at the, at the end of october and flowering for christmas okay and that's about it uh, i do not see a lot of problem with the ins uh, insect problem hey because these are species if you touch the leaf it's very sharp okay so you guys you can <laughs> you actually cut, uh, cut cut you if you're not careful uh only thing i i usually uh, pre uh, uh, to do is uh the only thing they have might be scale hot scale and so always trying to peel this off uh but if you have good air circulation, uh, uh, air circulation, uh, you will avoid some of the, the uh, scale might be under the, the foliage, okay? But I find growing in outdoor is actually uh, a lot pest-free versus in a greenhouse when you try to tie a lot of orchid together and there's not in the air circulation, okay? And we never had to spray any fungicide here anyway, but even outdoor, we never spray anything. You're not even fison. That's how tough they are. Not even fison uh, on them. They just, that's what's nice about species. Uh, NCEP has been around in Mexico uh, for 100, and they actually they discovered about a couple hundred years ago. But even before that, the evolution of that probably take about 10 million years. They are very, they are very pest and disease resistant. So. If you don't have to uh, use a lot of fungicide on them, you don't. Uh, uh, we only do it uh, as a preventative. But uh, for this one here, I can tell you, uh, or any insect, if you have uh, looking for a uh, really tough uh, carolia to grow, start up with something with insect. You can also go to our website and the search button is type in insect in there. Uh, it might bring up some insect that have uh, a hybrid that have insect in the breeding background, okay? And other than that, okay, that's that's about it. So again, we talk, we go over the public publication and the choice of the body media. Uh, I prefer for this type, going in the bar, uh, bark mix, okay? Uh, our medium size bar of is, is really good and we added a uh, bamboo charcoal in there. Uh, moss is not for beginner on daily insect. Okay, so if you never got any of the insect before, always try the bark first. Okay, but a good orchid bark, not the uh, the walk on bark. Uh, that's a very, very dirty. Okay, uh, other than that, here again, to rephrase. 
Look at the size. If this is a, a hy hybrid or anything, if, but this is using the alba with, with purple one. Look at the size of different, the suitable. Answer alba and this. And this is why answer alba uh, is coming back in fashion again for indoor and for under light. And really for the, the modern uh, archaeologists that we do not have a lot of space. So this is a good, perfect choice for you. Okay, uh, do I have any question before I wrap it up? Yeah, it's been fixed. Don't worry. Uh, this is not how to have, we will have NSEP type uh, throughout the year. But since this uh, the print uh, is, is prime, so I, this is kind of a show off stage. Uh, this is the only time that you can really see the print in this, you know, at its glory. You know, uh, it's the timing is always an issue. Uh, when we had the two weeks, three weeks break after Christmas, they were at their prime. Uh, this one here, for example, is the second ba second big one we have. It's already past its prime. Okay, so and that way uh, we probably will try to clean this up. And, and cut them back. But this is one print, one big print. We haven't repotted, haven't been repotted for about the last 10, 15 years. <laughs> and since it's the epiphy, it's sort of go on itself. The living the pot, there's, there's no more potting media left over. And we just missed the, miss the print. And they just take whatever moisture, especially right now, they love the moisture whatever they have. Okay, so this is why NSEP, uh, the species itself, is if you are in a cold area, they love, they love, and this, this, regardless, I, when I go to Florida show, I have people told me that no, NSEP will not grow in Florida. No, that's not true. You know, I see a lot of NSEP grow in Florida. They mount it on the tree. In fact, when you have to move the Venda because you have a cold front into your garage or the house, Venda is dry on them. That like crystal, for example, at if you're in Gainesville, oh, this time of year, they love it. They just love it. They, they love, they actually dry under this cold front and uh, day and night temperature different, okay? And that will be it for today's session. Okay, uh, we have a